is Valley News Live at 5. Good evening and thank you for joining us. It's a similar recipe as yesterday. Hot temperatures and a chance of severe weather a little bit later tonight. So how soon can we expect these storms for that? Let's check in right away with meteorologist Robert Hahn for the latest. Robert. Yeah, it doesn't look like any storms in the uh, next couple of hours, but later on tonight, certainly that chance for some strong and perhaps some severe storms. And we've got a lot of heat to work with out there. 91 in Fargo in the Wapaton Breckenridge area, 96 Jamestown, 97 in Sisseton. We're at 100 in Aberdeen. You factor in the humidity and we've got heat indices as high as 98 in Fargo, 101 in Gwinter and 102 in Aberdeen and in Sisseton. So very sultry conditions out there. Winds rather light. We don't have the breezes we had yesterday. So some winds out there staying on the light side and that uh, makes it feel quite warm. Cloud cover, not a whole lot in our area, but off towards the west and southwest, a bright white clouds to the southwest of Bismarck, some strong and severe storms making their way through that region. And we'll have our risk for severe storms later on tonight. But here in Fargo, as we head through the rest of the evening, it will be a sultry one, some upper 80s through the seven and eight o'clock hour and slowly cooling as we head towards the nine o'clock hour. More on that risk for severe weather later, but right now let's head it on out to South Moorhead with Hutch Johnson and the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue. Robert Hahn, thanks for that update to the forecast. As you said, right now we just have sunny, hot, and humid weather to be concerned about. We're at the big winner's house in South Moorhead. And uh, James Nelson, where'd you sign up to win, young man? At the grocery store. Uh, the grocery store. <laughs> good. And uh, what part of the store is it in, in case we're lost? Oh, right by the meat. Right by the meat department. Okay, I've got to tell you here, you got a big, rowdy crowd of hungry guests here. <laughs> did, uh, we, did Cashwise bring enough food to feed them all? No, I had a bite to bite. Oh, <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not forecasting much in the way of leftovers tonight there at the studio with this hungry gang here. We'll check in a little bit with the Cashwise guy. Guys, the grills are getting warmed up right now, and I'm getting warmed up too. It's hot and humid here. We're ready for some cooling showers tonight. More on that here in a bit. Back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Hutch. We're following new developments in a story out of Fargo tonight. A man has been arrested after police say he was involved in an armed robbery early this morning. Police say they arrested this man. He's 27-year-old Kasif Grant. Two others were arrested on some outstanding warrants. Around 3 o'clock this morning, police were called here to the Quality Inn off of 13th Avenue in Fargo for a report of an armed robbery involving a gun. Police say a man was outside smoking and then was robbed at gunpoint. And then when police got to the hotel, they then realized that the suspect was not inside any of the rooms. Police issued a search warrant for the hotel room and then detained five additional people. No one was hurt and police say they have not found a weapon. The fire marshal is investigating after a massive fire destroyed a Fargo's family's home overnight. Investigators are looking at fireworks among the possible causes after the homeowners told them they threw used fireworks in their garbage cans. Fire crews from Fargo, West Fargo and Horace all responded because there were no fire hydrants in the neighborhood on the 1600 block of Round Hill Drive. Fortunately, all six family members, a mom, dad and four kids, they were all able to get out safely. Got word that everybody was out of the house, so we didn't go into the house at all. Um, and there would have been almost no way of doing that because the house was fully engulfed. Um, they were out and safe. Fire officials also say there was heavy lightning in the area last night and are considering that in their investigation. We're also getting new information tonight. The Fargo Police Department has now identified the man that was seriously injured after a firework blew up in his hands. Officials say 46 year old Richard Taskinen found a firework on the sidewalk near the Noble Bar in downtown Fargo. The explosion left Taskinen with injuries to both of his hands. Police say he will survive, but his injuries were very significant. Taskinen does not have a permanent address. If you get an email from Netflix, pause before you do anything. We've heard from a few people in the community that a phishing scam is now hitting our area. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us what you should look out for. If you got this email, would you update your payment information? That's the question. If you got an email that looks like this one that's being shared by someone on Nextdoor, what would you do? Would you give them your payment information? No. I went downtown Fargo and asked some Netflix users. No, because the email address is not actually from Netflix's actual email. 
Do you think people would fall for something like this? Yeah. Probably, because I've got I've got emails like that before that I have had to update my payment method. It looks very similar. It could be legit, but it does look like it would be. They say don't second guess yourself, but second guess yourself when you get like an email, especially when it asks for money, to just be wary about phishing s scams. Don't click on the email. Go directly into the Netflix site. Like open a separate browser window, www.netflix.com, log in. If there's not an alert inside your secure session that says you need to update your payment information, you don't. What would you do? Um, either I would kind of research a little more, call Netflix maybe and see if that is the case. According to their website, Netflix will never ask for any personal information over email. They might email you saying you need to update your information. However, you do that through their real website. In Fargo, Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. If you've received one of the emails Netflix wants to know, you should forward the email to the address on the screen, phishing at netflix.com. CNN is facing some backlash after the network tr threatened to release the identity of the maker of a meme featuring President Trump wrestling a fictional CNN logo. Yesterday, CNN reported that it had identified the maker of the meme, and so they wouldn't identify him, but that could change. This is causing some stir on social media, some even calling it blackmail. Pundits and journalists from across the ideological spectrum question the ethics behind the reporting. This coming after three CNN reporters resigned due to the publishing of a false story linking a member of the Trump administration to a Russian bank. CNN released a statement saying that they had never made a deal with the ban and the left and left the reference in the story as an effort toward transparency. One of the greatest mysteries in history may be solved. A newly discovered photograph appears to show missing aviator Amelia Earhart and her navigator, Fred Noonan. Take a look. It was taken in about 1937 in the Marshall Islands, which at the time were under Japanese military control. It shows a short-haired woman, potentially Earhart, on a dock with her back to the camera. Nearby is standing man who looks like Noonan. Now, the two vanished during a round-the-world flight in 1937, presumed to have crashed into the Pacific Ocean and died. The latest missile test by North Korea is causing serious concern among U.S. officials with that test now showing they are capable of launching one that could reach Alaska. Now United States lawmakers are responding. North Dakota Senator John Hoven says the threat North Korea poses is very real. He says if we need to invest in our military, but says the key to solving the North Korea problem is to put pressure on China. We have to continue to put pressure on China. China can get North Korea to stand down. They can do it. And think about how much stuff China sells to us. They need our markets. They need our consumers. And they need to understand that North Korea is a threat to them as well as to the free world. And, of course, the United States leads the free world. Senator Heidi Heitkamp also issued a statement today saying we should invest in our nuclear deterrents, such as nukes and bombers we have at the Minot Air Force Base. The U.N. also held an emergency meeting today. But China and Russia block new sanctions against North Korea. The Fargo Police Department wants you to know about a registered sex offender. Roger McAvoy is now living at 735 14th Street North in Fargo. McAvoy was assessed as a high-risk offender and has been convicted of two separate sexual assault charges, all involving children, one of which was in North Dakota. A man convicted of attacking a woman at a Mableton convenience store is going to find out next month how long he's going to be locked up. A judge found Abdul Rahman Ali guilty of five felony charges late last month. Those charges include gross sexual imposition, kidnapping and assault. Ali will be sentenced August 14th. He could get life without parole. Those living with PTSD in Minnesota will soon have a new treatment option. This month registration for medical marijuana starts. PTSD was added to the list of qualifying conditions last December. And patients who suffer from the disorder and are certified by a doctor will be able to start receiving treatment as soon as August 1st. For more information on certification, head to valleynewslive.com.